O.J. Simpson has died. Uh, family released a statement on his social media accounts, and one of the more prominent, I would say, recognizable public figures of our generation, Chad, who was a part of the, uh, the most famous murder trial in American history. And I, I, I think back, when I think O.J. Simpson, I don't think Pro Football Hall of Famer. I think about this murder trial where he's acquitted of double murder of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman and where I was in school and the reactions to this trial. And to this day, everyone still believes he did it, including me. And the way that was handled throughout the rest of his life and the th- the, how we think back to that moment or those moments, the Bronco chase, and what was going on with the NBA game at the time with uh, Bob Costas on the play-by-play, and where it ended, where everyone was stunned, no matter which side you thought you were on at the time, including, I mean, I was, what, probably in fifth or sixth grade at the time, maybe? Where Uh, were you? It was, I I remember very well uh, where I was. I think it was Knicks, Rockets, NBA Finals that they cut into that with the Bronco chase. In June. With Bob Costas. And uh, the trial, I remember being in uh, history class with my middle school basketball coach as my teacher, Coach Jason Franklin, in homeroom, watching every second of the trial that we could. Uh, I don't I know in, that we got a lot of work done. I was in lunch. Those weeks. I remember being in eighth grade and, and watching every bit of the O.J. Simpson trial. It was such a seminal moment in American history where uh, someone who was a celebrity for two different reasons, one being a great football player, the other being an actor, and gaining a lot of fame through his acting, and was such a public figure, transformed with this double homicide that I absolutely believe he committed into something very different. And it's such a unique piece of American culture, history, so many different things. I think a life is very complex. I think humans are, are complex. They're good, they're bad. They do great things, they do awful things. Legacy can be difficult to define for anyone that's ever lived in a lot of ways. I think we're all a little bit of a lot of things in in many instances. It's not hard to define O.J. Simpson's legacy. It's the fact that he killed two people and got away with it. And and that's what today is. That's what it's become. I I don't want to sit here and, you know, dance on someone's grave on the day they die. But I will also admit that today has been hilarious online. Absolutely freaking hilarious online. Uh, Twitter X, whatever it's called nowadays has been amazing to follow throughout the day. I've found myself in tears watching cut ups of uh, pun intended of Norm Macdonald making fun of OJ Simpson. I have been laughing throughout the day at people's jokes online. It's been amazing to follow. Well, and uh, the, the, the jokes paired with the way that he was treated in many cases, the uh, Chad on social media, just go back to the social media part of this where he's, you know, he's posting videos and reacting to different things. He's taking photos with other women that are approaching him that are fans of his. Yeah. You know, that the, the celebrity aspect of the trial and him being acquitted of double, double murder is, is fascinating because how, how we would treat someone in a different celebrity status. But it was OJ. And for whatever reason... Uh, He was, I mean, he was viewed as this untouchable figure, despite the fact that, well, everyone still believes that he did it. And he released the book, If I Did It. You know, like, but there are so many stories. Billy Lucci has a story of OJ coming up to him and his girlfriend at the time at a bar, hitting on his girlfriend. And then right after, it was like two months later, is whatever he was, um, he he did the... uh, he went to Vegas and had the the robbery in the hotel the robbery room. and then the kidnapping in the hotel. He's get... trying to steal back his memorabilia, apparently. Yeah, but, but yeah, it was a but held them up in the yeah in the hotel room. I it's just it's it's all bizarre how everyone reacted to him in person. Not everyone. Some people just got out of the room. I would, uh, but it, compared to how others would just approach him and act like you know he's some movie star. Well, I've, I've told that story before about my buddy Mox. We called him Mox because he looked just like John Mox and uh, James Vanderbeek from Varsity Blues. Yeah. Uh, but my buddy Derek Johnson, a.k.a. Mox, 
worked at the liquor store with him at UT in college. And I, we're working the late night shift one night, just me and him together in the store. And his girlfriend at the time, who was a student at the University of Miami, is out in Coral Gables. And OJ Simpson is there, a uh, private area in a bar, buying drinks for everyone. And she's talking to her boyfriend saying, this is great. OJ's here. He's buying a shots. So we're hanging out with OJ and his crew. And my buddy is talking to her on the phone saying, you realize he's a murderer, right? right, right. That he's, he's killed two, a, a woman, his ex-wife, and someone else. And you're treating him like you just saw, you know, I'm trying to think of the pop star of the time. Uh, what would have been the equivalent of a Justin Bieber? You know, it's like that's how he was being treated then. It was very different and how he just sort of levitated into this area of American celebrity that was unlike anyone else. Infamous, I think it's a good word to describe him. Yes. But also weirdly accepted in a lot of ways for someone that I would I would dare say what 90 to 95 percent of people who follow that trial truly believe he did it. Yep. And they also but I, I it think, was much more divided on racial lines then, but I think now oh. 90 to 95 percent of people in America believe he did it and yeah, that the, they got it wrong. And how many of us can quote parts of the trial? Yeah. If the glove doesn't fit, you must have quit. You know, an 11-month trial, by the way. I forget how long that took. It went from, like, October or November of 94 to October of 95. Yeah. And the jury, at that point, they were just so spent, I would be too, that you're just, you know, whatever. Oh, and then Made in America, that uh, ESPN five-part series. The 30 for 30. The 30 for 30. It was great. It was awesome. Very well done. But not only that, the People versus O.J. Simpson. There you go. Where Cuba Gooding Jr. played O.J., and I forget the actor's name, but the guy who won the Emmy uh, for playing Johnny Cochran in that series. Um, so many uh, uh, David Schwimmer playing Robert Kardashian. Oh, that's right, yeah. So many big-time actors in that series. Courtney and that B. Was, Vance. That was very – thank you. Yes, Courtney B. Vance. That series was very well done yes, and compelling throughout, taking you back on a history of what it was like during that time and of the trial. Um, but also the, it's, the it's, phone calls during the, the, during the Bronco chase. Yeah. You know, I, I forgot all about that. Uh, when, you know, months later, weeks later, they're going back and playing part of this. Well, and, and going back to that night, I remember watching that chase of my parents and uh, watching on television, and, you know, I'm middle school age at this point, so clearly I was at a point where I, I could understand a lot of things. And we all just assumed this guy's going to off himself on national television, right? Like, he did it. Like, th that, was that, the, was that was the assumption, right? He did it. He knows he did it. He's remorseful. He's in a really bad spot. He believes he's about to go to prison, and he's got a gun in the back seat with Al Cowlings in this Bronco, and he's going to kill himself, and it's going to be really bad when this happens on television with cameras rolling. I remember that being the only thought in my head is, am I about to witness something like this on TV? Are they going to cut away when this happens, or are we all going to see this together? That was my lone thought that night. And then that leads to him you know, eventually stopping and turning himself in, and then the trial, and years later... I, it's never going to shake from my memory. And also, how, so many moments of that trial and everything that happened will that never chase, leave my memory. I, I know, man. And it's how slow that, that chase was. You know, just casually driving. He was doing like 40. On the freeway. I know. On the, on the freeway. And all the, all the uh, police officers and, and cars there. It looked like uh, a police escort. It, it's exactly right. Like they were going somewhere and they were just escorting, you know, the president somewhere. That's how slow and calm the chase was. So, um, the, the white Ford Bronco is now in a museum in Tennessee, in Pigeon Forge. Really? Yeah. It's there. So, I did not so know that. So is the, uh, you had, uh, Ted Bundy's car is there, and uh, John Dillinger's car is also there. But they had, they purchased the white Ford Bronco. Well, I knew that there was a famous car museum in, in Pigeon Forge, That's Gallenberg it. in yeah, the area. I, guess I, so. I had no idea it's that called, they acquired the Bronco. It's, uh, it's the crime museum is what is oh, where wow. it is. I've never... Do you think that they'll get more people going now with this death? They'll think, yes. you know, you know or, what I need to do? more offers for it. You know it. what we should do this weekend, honey? We should head out to Pigeon Forge and go to the Crime Museum to get a look at that white Bronco up close and personal. Well, the white Bronco, part of the, uh, the, the Twitter response uh, to, to OJ's death, uh, including OJ's last ride, <laughs> which is the, uh, the stretch hearse 
Bronco. I've seen so many funny posts from so many people that it's uh it's really incredible. The, uh, this is a good R. one here. OJ Cuba Gooding uh, Jr. Uh, this is kind of in line with the I'll tell my kids this was OJ Simpson joke. Yes. And it's a picture of Cuba Gooding Jr. <laughs> I mean, it's it, it they keep pouring in. You had Aaron Hernandez greeting OJ Simpson in hell and it's Tom Brady turning around <laughs> at the the hearing for during his suspension from the NFL. It was it, the, this one on is also like a small uh, video and uh, just the the tilting back of the head of Tom Brady and the look on his face of glee is perfect for uh, this being Aaron Hernandez greeting OJ Simpson. Uh, Davey had a good question uh, about Norm OJ McDonald, the afterlife, the, the undertaker. Oh, oh, this is great. This is a very recent one that I spotted today. Newly, newly dead. dead OJ. Newly this is dead from WrestleMania. OJ Simpson. <laughs> and, and, and the rock who turns around to the undertaker and has the look of shock just after this screenshot was taken. Someone else just posted RIP Norm Macdonald because he would have been cooking today oh. with this news with some online jokes. Oh yeah. So it, need to get him a special immediately. If Norm was still gracing us with his presence, that special would be amazing oh. right when OJ died. So we, we have a, a list of some of the best Norm Macdonald jokes on SNL uh, during weekend update. And uh, just how how long he was able to stretch out the OJ jokes because it, 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 every news update, uh, Norm was all over it. Uh, his first joke after OJ was found not guilty. <laughs> well, it's finally official. Murder is legal in the state of California. <laughs> so simple, simple, so quick, and perfect. Perfect, Chad. What else do you have? This is from uh, March twenty second, nineteen ninety seven. So okay. a year and a half after the verdict. Uh, Norm says, this week a California newspaper revealed that O.J. Simpson was awarded custody of his children, mainly because a court-ordered psychological test showed that he is a, quote, loving father. It should be noted, however, that the same test also showed that he was a loving husband. <laughs> also very well done. Well done. The, uh, from, also from uh, 97. Well, this week, after a Los Angeles restaurant refused to see him, O.J. Simpson demanded and got $500 in compensation. In addition, the restaurant must now offer separate murderer and non-murderer sections. That's so good. One of my favorite. And that, um, that was his final OJ joke on SNL. So this was from uh, one more I want to I yes. go through here that I spotted. Uh, January 11th, 1997. This is what's great about Norm. This didn't stop right when the verdict came out. This was two, three years <laughs> I know, later. I know. He is still hammering OJ Simpson, mainly because his boss at the time was good friends with OJ and told him to stop. So what does Norm do? He did the same thing I did with my nature videos. You keep going when you someone just, tells you to stop. you got to turn going. up the heat even more. Uh, his boss said it was getting old, and Norm said, no, 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 there's nothing old about this. Quote, this week in the O.J. Simpson civil trial, the focus shifted from the defendant to the alleged character flaws of Nicole Brown Simpson. Attorneys for O.J. hammered away at her lifestyle, citing sexual promiscuity, drug use, and the fact that she married a double murderer. <laughs> Uh, uh, right after the trial. So good. Effley Bailey said this week that if the defense only knew what Ron Goldman's last words were, they might be able to find the real killer. You know, if you ask me, Goldman's last words were probably up. Uh, hey, you're O.J. Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> Another great one. And his one. delivery was perfect on these two. Yes. And it was it, it just, uh, man. Uh, yeah, R.I.P. Norm MacDonald on this. Uh, Davey has a good question. Uh, what, what was worse, the double murder... <laughs> <laughs> or helping the Kardashians rise to fame. Oh, man. That, that was, yeah. He spawned a real legacy, a, a generation of rich Kardashians. What's the, what's the second most recognizable, memorable trial to that? To OJ. Oh, my like gosh. Like Casey Anthony, maybe? The Menendez brothers yeah. is one that comes to mind that was big at the time. Um. Nothing we, like we recently got into the Murdogs. <laughs> the Murdogs. <laughs> Murdogs. Yes. The Murdogs. But um, in, a, in an era just prior to really having like the AOL Instant Messenger, you know, or Napster, you know, the, the technology age that we were about to jump into, everyone circled around that. I mean, you're right about the TVs and stuff. We, they, uh, the cafeteria um, assistants during 
school, they rolled in these oh, cart, yeah, the, the TV cards. The huge television. And had them wrapped You around. had to have a cart for because TVs back then were so heavy, heavy and big in the back. But they had, they had a big rolling cart for it. rolled in like four or five of them around the room. Yeah. I mean, it was it, not, it wasn't really for us. It was for the, the workers. Everyone that was uh, everyone that was on lunch break at the time, and apparently because I went to school in Compton and didn't know it, there were threats of a violence and a riot, depending on the riot in my school then too, in my middle school. The actual race riot took place Is later. That true? Yes, but I remember them like we're going to lock down the school because uh, you know black kids are going to start fighting white kids once this uh, once this comes out because people are going to start taunting each other with the verdict. And I'm like, well, good. I, every time something happened in my school, I'm like, guys. We live in like an upper middle class suburb of Nashville. We, we really don't yeah. need to resort to this level of violence. There's not many people here living in poverty that's had to resort to a life of crime. I don't know why it always has to be this way. One more Norm McDonald joke that I just okay, read good. that made me giggle, so I'm going to read it also. Our top story tonight, this week in the civil trial of O.J. Simpson, the jury, which had earlier found him liable in the deaths of Ron Goldman and Nicole Brown Simpson, this week tacked on an additional $25 million in punitive damages. On hearing the news, Simpson declared, quote, this is far from over. Asked to clarify that statement, OJ said, quote, I'm going to kill more people. What do you think I meant? (laughs) It's the only thing. Oh, this is far from over. I'm going to kill more people. 76 years old. Um, The key players during the the, the trial, too. Cato Kalin. Yeah, Chad, who we've we've had on the show previously. We met him. He had like he what a comedy in. deal he was doing in town. He was in town doing some type of. I think he was on a book tour or something. Yeah. Super nice guy. Uh, I mean, you, high energy. He is very high energy. He's gun show on on roids. Yes. Yes. Gun uh, gun, gun show like in the a, taking synthetic testosterone yeah, era. I sent of Major Cato League a text. Baseball. We'll see if we if it still has the same number. But he was. He came on twice, I believe. We had him on again be, uh, after texting him to get him on. You know Cato is getting blown up today. Yeah, I, I mean, he was willing to talk about it all. Yeah. Um, you had Marsha Clark, uh, Christopher Darden, who took a beating on that yeah. show. Um, Sterling K. Brown played him. I do remember that yes. actor who played him. Johnny on. Cochran, yep. of course. And then there's Robert Kardashian, just yep. tied into the Kardashian. Alan Dershowitz. I mean, it's just the names that... Just come you to say mind. those names and you immediately remember. Yes, yes, and they were the Effie dream Bailey. team. Effley Bailey, yeah, um, yeah. O.J. Simpson dead at seventy six, and the the amount of the the involvement on social and stuff was just too much for me, for him. Yeah, it was just. It, uh, in thirteen years to the day, he was sentenced. Thirteen years to the day after he was acquitted, he was sentenced on the. The theft and robbery. His crime is not funny. No. But there's something later in life that became very comical about just seeing him in a golf cart on a golf course somewhere, putting out videos. Smoking a cigar. Predicting the Super Bowl winner or talking about whatever. And he would just he was he was weighing in like he had his own podcast. Right. And that everyone wanted to hear from OJ Simpson when they didn't. They just wanted him to live a quiet life away from everyone what? and not speak ever again. But he thought he was just still O.J. Simpson from the Hertz commercial and shooting Naked Gun yeah. with Leslie Nielsen, O.J. Simpson. And there was there was something both distant and comical about that. Yes. And every just time odd. I clicked on one of his videos, I laughed at that fact that um, this dude thinks he's actually a piece of Americana in a good way yeah, he's, yeah. and not a bad way. Yes. That he didn't kill his, his ex-wife. And Ronald Goldman and get away with it. But also, like, I crazy. Think, I think the reaction to it, Chad, is while you don't agree with it, you do accept the judicial system in our country. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, the, the, the process itself, while you feel it was flawed, um, he had his day in court, like it or not. You know? Yeah. So that they, you know, that's that I think that plays into it as well. Imagine well, and then a civil trial he lost, right? You know, and, and right. So it's just yeah, the, the standards and and the way that the jury reacted and how fast after eleven months, how fast the verdict came back. They were sequestered, weren't they? The entire time. You imagine that today? Oh, yeah. Imagine being that. That t- was a big part of being, it too. They followed some of the jury and the people versus O.J. Simpson yeah. being imagine, sequestered. Imagine being sequestered for. Uh, in this era, it would suck then, but you, you know, no social media it, it, with the attention on that trial today. If we were, 
the the millions that were paying attention to that trial then in 94, 95, what it would look like now. There would be there would be no specific memories about it. I think we're so conditioned now. A day like today, and I, you know, I was joking and saying I, I've laughed hard today. I, that's not a joke. I have. Yeah. At some of the responses, but I'm not really going to remember one thing that I saw because it's just a plethora of people who can get online and make their jokes about it and post their videos but, and do all this. But and in 1995, Hutton, we lived in a time where it was so specific to who had a voice. So the late-night talk shows would make jokes about it every night. Yeah. And they'd make jokes about Marsha Clark and her hair, or they'd make jokes about whoever. Yeah, you're right. And that's what you remembered because those are the only clips you could see. But in doing that, it gives me a lasting memory of those times and, you'd have and night- what was going on. Now I- it's just all sensory overload. Yes. Something happens, and everybody's responding. Everybody's talking about it. And while that's better for coverage and you get to know a lot more about it, I, I don't feel like I remember any one piece of commentary or thing about it specifically. They, but the, That's the difference. Yeah, you have the nightly news. I, you know, go home. I, my, I went to my grandparents before going home with my parents still coming home from work after school. You'd go home. I did the same the thing. Nightly news was on. You'd have the news of the trial of the day. And then you'd have the late night talk shows joking about that news yep. of the day. You're right. Um, but this was but a the, cycle every day, and there were only so many people, you know, with uh, networks and cable. Only so many people had a voice. Yeah. But that's what everyone went back to school and remembered was the joke from the Tonight Show the night before or whatever was made about everything. And that it's just different now. Davey, uh, were you, where were, what year were you born? I was born August 2nd, 1994. Okay. So the chase had already happened. It had just happened. I, I was going to add earlier, probably should have chimed in earlier, but Chad was asking about, um, you know, talking about the, the race war, black or white, which made me think uh, the Michael Jackson trial. Uh, that was another yeah. one that received a lot of uh, attention. But as far as the uh, sequestration for the jury, it was 265 days, which was the longest in U.S. history. So think about, <sighs> think about having no access to just the technology because they, they don't want you yeah. to have, you know, the, the news, uh, rumors, all that, or anything to influence what you're doing. But also just doing that for... for Two weeks. I'll think about it for nearly a year. That was crazy. Um, so ba- basically, Davey is all of his access to the moment is just based on everything that the is, is just word of mouth. Yeah, the ESPN thirty for thirty was really my first introduction to it, and then you guys were discussing the FX, um, the People versus OJ Simpson. That, that was great. Was, that was really kind of getting the, I guess a lot more information as far as knowledge into it. And I think that, that but uh, you're interested in it, right? I yeah, mean, well, I, I wasn't out. alive for JFK's assassination, but I love yeah, hearing, yeah, yeah. reading things about that. Too. The people for OJ Simpson, I think came out my first year of law school. So I was really diving into it at that point. And I think it was a pretty big talking point for like a lot of my classmates as well. See, I think the attention to the trial itself, if we had one like this today uh, on that, on that scale would be insanity. Yeah. Pure it, insanity. It, it would be overload. Like yeah. it would just be because you couldn't turn anywhere without it and being the, And the reaction to the verdict would be overload. Right. Times 100. You know, though, I, I say that, Hutton. I think our access would be through the roof and that we'd be able to see and get any joke we wanted about it, hear anything about it. There'd be secondary podcast about it in yeah. real time, all this stuff devoted to it. But there's so few monocultural moments now that there's still just so much out there that you can go get in your lane on whatever it is that you're but, lane. But it would take, it would it. take the status factor. Like the, uh, another Pro Football Hall of Famer you know, on this level um, that you know, is, is popular to just go from football to actor, right? Yeah. And then you uh, – it would be like a – I don't want to just name names, but it would be like Peyton Manning level. Right. You know? Hertz is still yet to recover. The the one thing I would add is, so looking at the case as a whole, that's just odd for me, is we know how big of a role and how DNA, just like how reliable that is in today's terms. Yeah. So whenever I went back, and I'm, of course I'm learning about this in like 2015, they didn't trust the DNA. They, they didn't have that great of a understanding of how it worked. And that was a big, I guess, factor into why they they didn't trust that science and so that led to them thinking ah we don't want to 
use this as a deciding factor for the jury. That's looking back on that, like 20 years after the fact, that just kind of like blows my mind a little bit. And I think for like my age group of people, it's just that that's hard to resonate. But I guess at the time when you are growing with that science as well, it makes more sense. It's crazy because that was a scientific development that would help juries and trials and everything. But like you're saying, it was n- new to the point that it was not fully trusted the DNA evidence. I and mean, there's a lot of things in the backdrop the the Made in America story gets into. There was a lot of issues with LAPD. Yep. And, and you know, there's a lot of things going on in the backdrop of, of what was happening during that time. But think about a trial 50 years before that where there's no, no one's even heard of DNA. I mean, juries had to just, just go on their gut and hear the evidence and, and then decide it. what they thought, you know, happened. And I still look back and think that not a very good job of doing that, by the but jury. But the if DNA, you're listening to all the evidence, but not just trusting the DNA, but al- also trusting that whatever Johnny Cochran's pushing about evidence being mishandled, yeah, you know, and how that plays into the DNA uh, process of what they're trying to explain, and people are hearing it for the first time. The glove don't fit. Well, and, and he, they successfully put Los Angeles County and the LAPD on trial too. The redirect was, we're going to show you a history of racism and violence with the LAPD and how this tends to happen to people of color. Rodney King. Yep. Right. And that, that's where Johnny Cochran was brilliant in the defense, that he was able to tie all those things in to put doubt into people's minds. And it worked. Well, another, I forgot one name, Judge Ito. Lance Ito. <laughs> There was a Lance Ito joke that I read from Norm MacDonald earlier, and I forget what it was. Something about him doing a television interview, I think, during the sequestering. While everything was going on, they'd ask him if it was appropriate if he, he's doing that when everyone else is sequestered. And I forget the joke now, the punchline. But Norm hit all, covered all the bases. He had every possible angle of O.J. Simpson jokes. I'd like to know what that trial cost. $2 million. Is it $2 million? That's low to me. For not guilty. Yeah, for not guilty. Uh, all, all to allow O.J. Simpson to later give his thoughts on March Madness well, that, from that, a golf cart. That might have just been yeah. for the jury sequestering. Okay. There had to be uh, much more than that. And the decision to allow him to put the glove on. You know? Yeah. <laughs> the tiny glove. Wasn't it, um, I believe it was Chris Darden that was his decision. Yeah, I feel like in the People versus OJ Simpson, that was a big dramatic moment. And the way when he, he did it, and it didn't fit, and someone he, didn't want to do it, and someone his did. Hand on the leather, you know. Yeah, maybe it was Darden that screwed that up. I can't remember exactly. Darden took the like he was definitely the he he had the bullseye on him in these shows. Yeah, and Marsha Clark too. Yes, but the, like the behind the scenes conversations and stuff. Yeah. Anyway, uh, and then the book "If I Did It," but the word "if" is so tiny. In the title. So you just see I did it with OJ on it. Did he, so 33 years is what he was sentenced to for the, the robbery. How much time did he actually serve? That's a good question. Because he, I mean, it feels like he was in and out. Because this was what, 2008 or, or so, I want to say, ish. It's around the time, Chad, we, you and I met probably. Yeah, nine, nine years. I, I remember nine. Nine he years. served nine. I remember the, the, the ESPN 30 for 30 made in America really did a good job of putting all that into context and going back. Cause that's something we don't really remember a lot about, right? But interviewing all the principals involved with him getting arrested the second time. And it was pretty clear, which I'm fine with quite frankly, but it was pretty clear that we missed out last time. You're going to get the maximum penalty well, and the on this one, the way he was set up and the way to the day he was acquitted too. Yes. But that everyone around him, like even, you know, there were people admitting, yeah, yeah, you, you, you're not getting away with this one. Whatever the maximum is, you're going to get it, even if it is some sort of misunderstanding. What would you Because guys... he was very much like, I'm just taking my property back. There was a, a That's d- what he disagreement, was yeah. and I'm going in to get that, and there was nothing else. And it was the, was it the Heisman it. Trophy? He believes he was set up, too. That was stolen? I, it, was, it was football memorabilia. I yeah, forget exactly what it was. Uh, what would you guys do if OJ moved next door to you? You know, so he was someone's neighbor. Uh, I mean, I think I, I think if I'm OJ's neighbor, I'm probably so wealthy, like wherever he was living, it looked like that you don't care as much. Yeah, there's a lot of space in between you. I mean, look, I, he's a murderer. I don't know, man. You know, he killed two people. I, I also don't think 
I don't know that I'd be worried living next to him because it's not like he just he was a serial killer that was killing random people. He killed his ex-wife when he was mad at her. And then Goldman just happened to be going over there to bring yeah, something to Nicole. Yeah, and he had Nicole. a history of uh, domestic violence that you found out after the fact with yeah. Nicole also. So, you know, yeah, I'm also- not excusing it. Oh, uh, I, know, but I, I know. But I'm saying I don't know that I'd necessarily be that nervous if O.J. Simpson was living close by. The, yeah, I, I wouldn't be worried about O.J. I wouldn't, I wouldn't hang regard. out with him. It would be more so people probably trying to get to O.J. Just as far, you know, like yeah. from yeah. like the clout standpoint. Yeah, you'd be living on the golf course. You, you would know, right? Yeah, I wouldn't spend a lot of time hanging out with him. I don't think we'd be friends. No. Other than the occasional wave when he's out, you know, taking There's a trash out. <laughs> Hello. You see him, like, uh, holding a knife. He's, like, chopping something. Like Ronald a... Goldman's famous last words. Oh, hey, there's O.J. Oh. Simpson. Oh, there's, you're O.J. Simpson. Look, you're O.J. Simpson. Um, Shohei Otani had some good news. The uh, interpreter, now ex-interpreter, uh, Ipe Muzahara, feds say that he stole around $16 million from Shohei Otani. That he, in fact, was a victim of theft and not a part of this gambling scheme. What, a, what, do, what do you think the celebration was like behind the closed doors at the offices for Major League Baseball when the feds are saying this in their investigation into Mizuhara? You think they did a toast? Champagne toast? I, it's still difficult for me to wrap my head around. The dude had $183 million in losses, okay? It was about $40 million in net negative. Because he won $144 million or whatever, right, too, right. over time, over two years. I, I'm going to take their word, the prosecution's word on this, because they said they sifted through all the text messages. And that gambling was never discussed. They, there was no connection at all. But that I'm being led to believe that Otani had a group of people and advisors around him that just because they did not speak Japanese when they opened up his bank account for direct deposit from all those huge checks from the angels, right? and that the interpreter convinced his financial advisory team that Otani demanded they not be a part of it and they not see the records of his bank statements or anything else, and that was just accepted by them is a stretch for me to believe that part of it. Where now, is- the way they break it down, if that's true... He's absolutely just a victim of theft and all this. That's right. But how well, did no one come in and well, say, we need to see what's going on? Well, the financial team, are they just English speaking? Yes. Well, that's how they did not speak that's Japanese. That's believable to me then. Because if you have the interpreter who's by his side for everything say that, yeah, uh, uh, Otani doesn't want you to see this, I, I just have to take the guy's word for it. He's speaking for the guy you work for. You know, that's the tough part is the language barrier that allowed all this to happen. Um, but to pay off the gambling debts, I mean, uh, the investigation here, I don't think the, the federal authorities are going to just flippantly put this out there um, unless they're for certain that there's no connection to it. I find it hard to believe as well. $16 I, I, million yeah, in I'm, debt. I'm not, I, I believe now what but they're also, saying is true. I just think this whole thing... Is crazy. Let me also say that he was able to get away with this, and there wasn't any checks or balances put in place if where this would be prevented. So let's hypothetically. By the way, Mizahara also never bet on baseball, which that is that is out there too. That's in which, the prosec- that the prosecution's that, report. Well, that did we, not once bet on baseball. That we Mizuhara. know because this was not done through an app. Yeah, that we know of. But I will again take their word for it through the investigation, and it's not. It's not coming from Major League Baseball. That's why I trust it. Should I trust it that much, Chad? I mean, I... I mean, this is a lot of detail in the, in the investigation. I, I, I have a hard time. I want to believe in federal authorities when it comes to criminal investigations. Well, the amount of time they've put into this. I, I want to believe this. So I don't want to be someone who just willy-nilly is a conspiracy theorist and denies everything that anyone ever puts out there when it's a federal type deal. And you've got legit investigations going on. I want to believe them and take their word at it. And it seems they've done with the statements that were released and all the paperwork that's been put out there. It seems they've done their due diligence. So yeah, I I will believe that this is what happened. 
while also asking the follow-up of how was one person, the only one around him that spoke Japanese, able to have this much power when there were also hired financial advisors that did not at least look into the fact that this guy is claiming Otani wants no one else to look at his bank statements other than the interpreter. And I'm the financial advisor. Well, I'm in charge of his finances. That, to me, is very odd that no one would step up and well, say more. You can only see the money that's in the account if you're the financial advisor, right? Not the, not the money that was paid. Well, and to them, they may, have been, they may have seen it and just thought, well, he's just spending money. Otani, I'm saying. And also, okay, that's right. Um, the other part of this, too. When in reality, he's not spending much money and the guy's just gambling it away. If we were paid, it, let's say we, uh, let's just say we're paid in euros. Okay? Yeah. I do believe, like, it, it, not just, uh, you know, not, not just, you know, the, the average salary. Let's say you're getting paid $200 million. But in euros. And you have the, you have, you take it to the bank. Would and you don't really know how it translates, right? The transaction. It would be pretty easy for someone to skim off the top of that. Because you're just assuming that that's the amount that you're getting in U.S. dollars, right? I don't think Otani was ever looking at it. Well, I, I really just think that he wanted to be totally separated from it. And I think that and so if, he had his if guy they go saw the withdrawals, everything. his financial team just thought, well, he's got a ton of money. He's just taking money out you know, and spending it how he wants and not properly following up on that to see what he was spending. And if, if we're to believe what the authorities are saying, it was Mizuhara, his interpreter, that was just out there taking money out and gambling it away. And he would have 25 bets per day on average, and it would range from 10000 to $160,000 per bet. It's a great day for Major League Baseball. It, it, I mean, the celebrate. I, this is immediately what I thought when I saw this, this is live. This seems to me to be pretty open and shut, and they get to move about their business now, and their golden child, superstar, hope for international money for years to come and endorsements is, is fine. He's clean in all of this. And he is a victim in this whole story. That's what the authorities are telling us. And in this case, I choose to believe the authorities on this one, because I've got no reason to doubt them. Well, on, on the flip side of this story, you've got John T. Porter in the NBA and Adam Silver, who has a vast range of authority on discipline says, yeah, I can, I, I could go to with the extreme discipline and ban him for life. Lifetime ban. Pete Rose treatment. I have an enormous range of discipline available to me, he said at a, a Board of Governors meeting, but it's a cardinal sin what he's accused of of the NBA, and the ultimate extreme option I have is to ban him from the game. That's the level of authority I have here because there's nothing more serious, I think, around this league when it comes to gambling, betting on our games, and that's a direct player involvement. And so the investigation is ongoing, but the consequences could be very severe. Uh, absolutely. Especially considering what he was, uh, what he is accused of doing, which is taking himself out of a game for an over-under of a, amount of points or rebounds. And then he's on the, what, the sick list. Then he's on a, a what is a hamstring or a quad issue. Uh, and then plays the next game. The whole thing is, and, and then played much longer in terms of minutes, but he's a guy who doesn't really play that much. And because the Raptors were banged up a bit, he was going to be playing more. This is going to be a fast and swift punishment for Porter whenever the investigation wraps up. I'm, I'm very cynical on this one because my first reaction to all these, you know, big talking comments from Adam Silver is, Boy, check out the big balls on Adam Silver. He's going to ban a 24-year-old 11th guy on a roster right. from the league. Man, what, what a strong message you're sending right there because basketball fans worldwide are really going to be deprived of Jonte Porter's five minutes a game that he was getting. Of course you ban the guy for life. Are you kidding me? If there's any connection to him taking money from gambling to fake injuries or, or, to go under on an over under yeah. and having a and bunch of people under. involved in it and the massive the, the, and making money off of it uh, yes you ban Jonte Porter now and the difference if it's Anthony Edwards that's still, in the news for doing this do it. you still have to do yes, it yes but if my point is if it's Anthony Edwards accused of this and he releases this statement then I'm saying great good good for you this is a powerful move 
by a powerful guy in the commissioner. But I see this about Jonte Porter. I'm thinking, yeah, this is an easy call. Ban him for life. Send a message. No one cares. Even Raptors fans don't care if this guy's banned for life. And move on. Make sure you throw the book at him to show the rest of your league, I've got some teeth when it comes to this cardinal sin, which is what Adam Silver yeah, called it. I, and it is. And Anthony Edwards is a good example. If, if Anthony Edwards in the future is involved in anything like this, any player, this is the precedent that's yeah. been set. Yep. So this is what he's doing, but he's also saying the precedent for anybody in the future. That's the hope. Well, but I think it's easy to make this guy the example and just well, go ahead and say is, that and do it. But this is the only player he can make an example of at the given time. Right now. 